let's talk about fuel economy in the Jeep Gladiator and my first thousand miles of seat time. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Hey, let's talk about Jeep ownership, my first thousand miles of seat time in the Jeep, and what kind of fuel economy am I getting? Well, first of all, let's talk about seat time. I've just crossed a thousand miles in the Jeep. I've had it for, I don't know, a couple months, something like that. And first off, let me just sum it up in one word, awesome. Uh, I love the Jeep Gladiator. It's fun to drive, it's got plenty of power. I love the looks of it, it's unique. And even more importantly, and this is probably the most important, I haven't had any issues with it, barring one little glitch. I had an occasion where I turned the Jeep on, or turned the Jeep on as it is a push start, and the radio screen stayed black. It didn't come up. Now I have experienced this in other, uh, in other vehicles, particularly uh, my wife's Jeep Wrangler did the same thing one time and a Ram Rebel I had a few years back. The whole gauge cluster, because it's all electronic and radio was, was black when I turned it on. Every time it's happened in all three of those vehicles, uh, after the initial little glitch, it was fine. So that's the only little problem I've had. Um, how is it as far as noise and squeaks and rattles and comfort and all that good stuff go? Well, first of all, let me say that it is a Jeep. I mean, it's not gonna be luxury quality. You're not gonna have, you know, the ultimate in smooth ride, although it is pretty darn impressive. Um, nor are you gonna have noise free, a, a noise free experience, I guess, right? I mean, it does have the hard top. I did put the Sunrider soft top on mine, so, it's not like uh, it's fully insulated or maybe it's still just the hard top, but uh, it really is pretty darn quiet given what it is. I mean, again, I don't expect it to be, you know, perfectly quiet or perfectly uh, soundproofed because it is a Jeep and it does have the Sunrider top that I put on. So really that's something that I did. It's not gonna be a function of the OEM version, but it's pretty darn good. I don't have any, and you guys can hear, um, because the mic on, on this camera picks up things pretty well. Uh, there are no squeaks or rattles or anything bouncing around, which is awesome. I know, and this is just inherent to the soft top, but in my, my wife's Jeep Wrangler, which is a soft top, you get all kinds of noises from things bouncing around. You know, the, the panels on the sides kind of slapping back and forth as you go. Things kind of creaking on the inside. It's because it's a soft top. But this is an excellent alternative, I think, if you want a Jeep and the ability to remove the top, albeit not that easy, and, uh, and not have tons of noise and sound. So kudos to Jeep. They've done a good job in keeping this thing pretty darn livable from a sound quality. As far as materials go, fit and finish, all that kind of stuff, no issues whatsoever. Uh, everything fits the way it's supposed to. There isn't any area or anything that looks like it's wrong or didn't fit well or was cobbled together. You remember GM's uh, old adage, right? Especially on way, you have to go back a little ways, but when they cobble together cars, you know, they'd like pull different pieces and parts off the shelf to come up with a, a refresh or a new model year. They did it with the Corvette once. It's like they pulled a bunch of old pieces up, cobbled up the Corvette, and it was horrible. Surprised it didn't kill the brand. It certainly didn't help it. But nothing like that in the Jeep. Everything is awesome. Everything is put together well and wearing well so far. Granted, I know I only have a thousand miles on the Jeep, but still, there aren't any wear, there's no wearing in the plastic or any big scrapes or anything, you know, that this crazy little stuff that sometimes you get uh, in a new vehicle. And you don't know until you drive it for a while or spend some seat time. So I'm very happy with it. Um, I would highly recommend it if you're in the market for a mid-sized truck and you're looking for something a little bit unique and you want the convertible feature that the Jeep offers, which is really, it's, uh, let's be honest, it's, it's main draw, I think, at the moment anyway. 
Not so much that Jeep came out with a truck, but the Jeep came out with a truck that's convertible, which for me is just too freaking cool. I love that. Now, let's talk about fuel economy, right? I showed uh, in the thumbnail this little picture. It's supposed to get 17 city, 22 highway, and 19 combined. Um, probably average, maybe a little bit low for, uh, for what most mid trucks are. But I'll tell you, real world, and granted, most of my driving is under 45 miles an hour, under 55 miles an hour. I don't do a lot of freeway driving, really, because I just don't have to. Um, so I'm getting 16 miles per gallon right now. Not really great. I mean, in my Tundra, I think uh, I think I was touching on that uh, occasionally too. So that's a full size truck and uh, able to get something similar to what this Jeep Gladiator offers. So 16 miles per gallon is my average fuel economy right now. Again, I have no doubt that it would be a bit higher. I'd probably get more in the in the 19 to 20, maybe 21 mile per gallon range if I did more city driving, but 16 miles per gallon for me, or for me rather. Anyway, I just wanted to get on here, kind of give you guys a quick little update as to how my Jeep is doing, my first thousand miles in the seat, and what the fuel economy is like. Leave a comment down below, let me know, are you still digging your Jeep Gladiator, and what kind of fuel economy are you getting? Real quick, shameless plug, if you haven't and you're interested, check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive, all about my 2020 Toyota Tacoma. And don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.